Hi guys. So this is going to be one of those little dorky talking head videos that I don't make as often as I used to. Just kind of hit and record, talking to you guys. But I wanted to talk about both uh, the rumors, rumors from Bloomberg, which I, I read the article from uh, from The Verge, because... I'm a dork like that. I actually go to The Verge. I don't recommend The Verge as a reputable news source because they are very, very spinny on things. But they usually get most most Apple news accurate. I, I, I can say that. Um, and they're just, of course, echoing from Bloomberg here. But yeah, as you can read from the headline, Apple will reportedly ditch Intel chips and Macs as early as 2020. This is a full circle step, guys. This is amazing. Um, so two thoughts I have on this. One, um, history. Uh, back in the late late 90s, early 2000s, Apple used to run nothing but power PC chips on most of their hardware. Um, that, that, was, that was not as common as the Intel chips. So there was a lot less people making their own homebrew Apple computers because sometimes the alternative Apple hardware that you can get your hands on, it would run the, the processes natively, not counting the uh, proprietary boot stack, but the chip itself uh, was on hardware that was so niche that sometimes it would cost more to build a Hackintosh back then. And then there was, you know, there's processes you can run to emulate the, the processor on an Intel chip, but that was always very slow and sluggish. So as soon as Apple switched to Intel, that's when the boom of the Hackintosh uh, craze started going. And it's a big community. You may not know how big of a community. If you type into uh, Google or uh, YouTube, I'm sorry, YouTube, you type into YouTube and Hackintosh, you're going to see a ton of videos. So this kind of brings it back. Now they're going to be going to a chip they're going to build in-house. So they have way more control over every aspect of this machine. So they can control, how, you know, sign signatures on the chip so you can't thir load third-party software. A lot in the same way have, you really haven't seen anyone putting an alternate OS on an iPad or iPhone. They're going to have that control on their hardware. This, this also might affect uh, people who use boot camp. That's crazy to think. And so my second thought, of course, leans deeper into the uh, Hackintosh thing. I think this could be the thing that puts a nail pretty much in the coffin for Hackintoshes. That means people who want to run OS X on their home-built machine, uh, their options at that point are going to be just Linux or Windows. Um, and then maybe some emulation layer for hardware, I guess, maybe. Um, there's no system that's completely bulletproof. I'm sure someone somewhere will get something booting somehow <laughs> even if it's our, like a reverse engineering of their their uh, uh coco desktop i think it's called i'm not sure but anyways uh yeah so what do you think are you a hackintosh user um do you think this is going to affect you do you think this is going to affect people who like to dual boot on apple products or is this just another example of apple just controlling the consumer let me know peace guys